to a brand new series of Mock the Week. I'm Jaro Breen. Joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Nathan Caton and Mickey Flanagan, Chris Addison, Hugh Dennis and Greg Davis. We start with a round called Headliners. Here's a picture of the Chancellor of the Exchequer, George Osborne, and the German Chancellor, Angela Merkel. But what does OBEC stand for? Is it a list of people for whom um, Osborne writes his budgets? Is it oligarchs, billionaires, Etonians and conglomerates? <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, nice. Nice. Is it, in fact, old Berliner eats chin? <laughs> Is Merkel going, oh, bubblegums, extra chewy? Mm. <laughs> this is clearly uh, opulent Bell End enjoys coffee. <laughs> Osborne oh, Bangs, Euro Cutie. <laughs> <laughs> Is uh, Merkel saying, uh, Oberschichtige berühmte englische Currywurst? Well, let me just check the notes if that's uh, correct. That's actually that, the correct that, answer. Uh, that's, that's, Is it a Spanish comment on what's happening on their, in their country? Is it, oh, blimey, is catastrophe. <laughs> yeah, well, that, can we move off the foreign voices? Uh, <laughs> Is, is okay, do we have a, do we have, no, yeah. do we have a correct answer? Yeah. Okay, yes. Merkel is saying, offensively beschämende egoistische Currywurst. No, no, that's not the correct answer. <laughs> can we just, genuinely, because then we give the correct answer, I can get up and move on with my life. Uh, is it outraged no, Berlin? <laughs> no, no, is it's not. Merkel saying, orange farbige, stechliche, ergeizige Currywurst. <laughs> Osborne believes he is Elvis's child. <laughs> There is an answer to this. There is a correct answer. <laughs> How about a, a compromise? What if we give you the right answer, but in a German accent? Yeah. <laughs> uh, is it Osborne blames European crisis? It is, of course. Thank you very much, Chris. Uh, yes, the answer I was looking for was Osborne blames European crisis. This is the news that Chancellor George Osborne believes that the current crisis within the EU is killing off Britain's chances of an economic recovery. This comes in a week in which Europe agreed to a bailout of up to 100 billion euros for Spanish banks. Spain is now the fourth European country to be bailed out following Portugal, Greece and Ireland. They've given the Spanish banks 100 billion euros. I don't think you should be giving Spanish banks 100 billion euros. Not given the number of British bank robbers currently living in Spain. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to arrive in one van. Uh... <laughs> a lot of it's going to a bank called Bankia, isn't it? Is, it sounds like a bank from a children's programme, doesn't it? It is difficult to take the economies <laughs> of countries seriously where the word bank is written as Banco. <laughs> uh, it is generally easier to think that they probably don't do it. Hey, but it does. And Banco! <laughs> banco, 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 Banco. Yeah. Bank, uh, this, this accent's all right, is it? It's a fine accent. I'm sorry. To be, I'm sorry. To be honest, Dara, you've been doing a ridiculous accent since the beginning of this series. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Dara, that, it does help when you go on holiday there, though, doesn't it? Because, you know, even someone like me, I walk along and I go, Super Mercado, I bet that's a supermarket. <laughs> Banco, that'll be the bank. <laughs> Baro. Bar. <laughs> but half a chance. You've been to Japan? Nothing. <laughs> I give you nothing. You walk about, you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> I, I was in the bank the other day. This is absolute truth. And a man had a shit on the floor. <laughs> it was the most shocking thing I've ever seen in my life. But that, took it out that, that is one crazy. hell of a deposit that he has made that <laughs> He probably yeah. normally does all of his banking on, on the internet, but he couldn't, he couldn't log on on that day. The, the, the Spanish haven't had any strings attached to their uh, their bailout, have they? That was a big problem, yeah. You know, because the Spain, Spain, they're going, well, you know, how is it possible we can't work any harder? We already wake up twice a day. <laughs> 
They, yeah, they don't, they don't have, it's quite open-ended, whereas the other previous ones, like the Irish one, for example, they want us to pay back. <laughs> the Greek... Uh, the Greek one... The Greeks are really angry. They're really angry. They're building a horse and everything. <laughs> so what is uh, Osborne hinted at, by the way, uh, with regard to Europe? What's he he might be gay. Oh, and change it. <laughs> no, he has not. <laughs> I will say it again. Yes, I will say it again. As he said, oddly enough, there is a link Wait, between. I have, to, I have to do it without oh. him going. He might be gay. <laughs> <laughs> what has the Chancellor of the Exchequer, Osborne, recently hinted at that eight out of ten Britons apparently agree with? He might be gay. No. <laughs> There is, oddly enough, a link between pasties and failing banks, in the sense that when you open them up, you've no idea what you're going to find inside. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do like how, um, how Osborne is, is using any tactic to blame everyone else and not himself. Like, he is technically like the white middle-class equivalent of the singer Shaggy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't me, you know? <laughs> He threatened a referendum. He threatened a referendum. He threatened, he referendum. threatened literally threatened a referendum in Europe. What happens, though, Dara, you seem to know about this, so... Uh, if we leave, right? If you leave? If you say, say, say we go, right, that's it, we don't want nothing to do with you anymore. We've tried, we've tried with you there people, uh, but you don't know how to look after your money. Uh, <laughs> you're all irresponsible, you spend all day long swimming about. Swimming um, <laughs> about? Yeah. You, know, you, you Europeans just you walk constantly about. just... <laughs> so how can you let people vote on something when they don't know what... They don't know what they're doing. That's what happens at general elections. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 I did, by the way. I like the direction this show's taking. Yeah. They don't give us the chance to vote on anything. We just voted a dog as the greatest <laughs> talent <laughs> in this country. <laughs> we are not a responsible nation. We <laughs> can walk on the chance. We would vote in a pineapple with a face drawn on it because it looks funny. <laughs> <laughs> Problems, you mean like, like Boris Johnson, essentially? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hand over control of the world's fifth largest city to a guy with funny hair. Flubba <laughs> 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 lubba you keep doing the flubba lubba thing, we love that. <laughs> <laughs> we love that you do the flubba lubba thing. <laughs> 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 but they're saying that he's done so well, Boris Johnson, now that he's back as mayor, that he should become the next Prime Minister of Britain. That's the thing. But he was remember. actually born in America, so he's eligible to become the <gasps> next President of the United States of America, <laughs> which would be my preference. <laughs> Imagine that, the leader of the free world, the most powerful oh, man right. in the world, <laughs> cut to a, a picture of a fat scarecrow on a bike. <laughs> 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 Now we play a round called Angela Smirkle's Comedy Bailout. <laughs> this game involves Nathan, Chris and Andy, so if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round is a stand-up challenge. I launched the Wheel of News, and wherever it chooses to stop, one of our performers will step forward and talk about that subject. The winner is whoever I think is the funniest. OK, here we go. The first subject is... Finance. Can I have somebody to go in and talk on that? Andy. <laughs> so... You could argue a lot of people have got too much money, couldn't you? I would personally argue anybody who ever bought the autobiography of the talking meerkat, Alexander Orloff, <laughs> you have too much money. <laughs> anybody who's ever bought glow-in-the-dark loo roll, you have too much money. Anybody who's ever bought a cosy sofa blanket with sleeves called a slanket, <laughs> you know who you are. Also, anybody who's ever bought an innocent smoothie. <laughs> How expensive are they? <laughs> £2.49 for a bottle the size of a specimen sample. <laughs> and they have the cheek to call them innocent. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, go to a supermarket, buy yourself a banana. <laughs> it will cost you 20 pence. Take a big bite, go... <laughs> You would have saved yourself £2.49. <laughs> OK, let's spin the wheel again. The subject is health. Who wants to come in on that? Right, health. Um, 
I, I uh, actually don't have uh, that good a relationship with my GP. Um, for one reason and one reason only, up until the age of 17, uh, my GP had me on their records as a woman. <laughs> <laughs> but yet, yeah, they, they had me on their records as Miss N. Caton. And then one, one day, they sent me a letter in a post addressed to Miss N. Caton. Now, because I'm 17, I don't really pay attention to the detail. I open the letter, and the letter says, Dear Miss N. Caton, your doctor surgery would like to invite you to attend a cervical screening next Monday at night. <laughs> now, this is where I messed up. Um, <laughs> see, at 17, I knew what cervical was. That's obvious, right? But what I didn't know was that there's more than one meaning for the word screening. <laughs> I thought screening was like, you know, you're screening a film. So, when it said we would like to invite you to attend a cervical screening, <laughs> in my ignorant, naive 17-year-old brain, I honestly thought I was being invited to watch a movie about women's genitalia. Right? <laughs> now, I'm 17, I'm horny, I'm a virgin. Am I gonna go? You're damn right I am. <laughs> so, next Monday morning, I go to my GP, I get to the reception, it's full of women, doesn't put me off. Right? <laughs> Walk up to the receptionist, I go, hey, how you doing? Um, I'm Nathan Caton, I'm here for the cervical screening. <laughs> She looks up, sees me standing there with nachos, popcorn, and pick and mix. <laughs> Starts laughing in my face. <laughs> okay, that leads me with Chris. Let's see what you've been left with. Let's spin the wheel. Uh, the topic is relaxation. We're obsessed in this country, obsessed with relaxation. Currently, Waitrose, in their essential range, sell Waitrose essential lavender-scented candle. Because we've all been there, haven't we, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> there are no lavender candles in the house, darling! How am I to have a petal-strewn bath with my whale noise CD? <laughs> Whale noise CDs. We are gullible bastards. We will buy anything so long as we've been told that it's relaxing. Whale noises. <laughs> are you relaxed? I've never been more at peace. <laughs> I saw a CD once called Relax with Pure Scottish Moods. Relax <laughs> with Pure Scottish Moods! <laughs> Chippy, track two, slightly resentful in the country in the first place. <laughs> track three, go, you bastards! <laughs> Very good, well done there. Point to Chris, congratulations. <laughs> Our next round is called, if this is the answer, what is the question? On the board of six categories, Nathan, which category would you like? Uh... Home news, please. OK, your category is home news. The answer is trains, toilets and celebrities. What is the question? Is it, if you're going to make a sex tape on public transport, what three things do you need? <laughs> <laughs> what three flavours come through when you're tasting English wine? <laughs> is it, according to the coalition agreement, what <clears throat> three things do the Lib Dems have responsibility for? <laughs> <laughs> is it, name... Name three things I've left my umbrella in. <laughs> Is it three things you're probably best off not to lick clean? <laughs> Is it what is the name of Thomas the Tank Engine's no holds barred autobiography? <laughs> Is it what Peter Andre says when he's asked what his daily routine is? My trains, my toilets, and my celebrities. <laughs> is it what? Is it what? what is, is it what? High pitch, but not Australian anymore. Yeah. <laughs> our trains, <laughs> our toilets, our celebrities. <laughs> I went to a voice coach to get rid of my Australian accent, and I can't help thinking she's done something wrong. <laughs> for a while, so I sometimes slip into both fucking actions. <laughs> <laughs> I trained for the six pack. <laughs> I get I it. I, get it. <laughs> I don't miss my jeans. <laughs> Does anyone have another answer? Uh, what do 
do we do better than Morocco? <laughs> Okay, uh, can we have a correct answer? Oh, I think I've got it. Oh, <laughs> is it? Not the build up to the correct answer, but go on. Is it name three things I've puked up on at the end of a festival? <laughs> <laughs> Dara. <laughs> yeah, I'll give you the real answer, Dara. Will you give me the real answer? What are the three main talking points on a saga holiday? <laughs> Is it? Is it three things that are full of shit? Yeah. <laughs> I'm the Peter Andre thing. <laughs> Where it makes the money for the children. That was the thing I Is it? No. <laughs> what three things were most complained about at the Queen's Jubilee? You can do that in a proper voice. Okay. <laughs> what three things were most no. complained? <laughs> what three things were most complained about at the Queen's Jubilee? Very good. Thank, Thank you very much, Chris. That's uh, very. Good. Yes, the question I was looking for was what aspects of the Queen's Jubilee celebration drew criticism from the press? Although the weekend was largely considered a success, there were complaints mm -hmm. that the train system was unable to cope with the vast crowds, raising concerns about next month's Olympics. The lack of toilets provided for revelers was also <laughs> criticised alongside the BBC's celebrity heavy coverage of the event. Did you watch the various events? The BBC's coverage was sort of criticised for looking less like a royal occasion and more like the one show, but that is what the Queen calls it. It's the one show! <laughs> <laughs> It was an excuse for a bit of an ease up, though, wasn't it? You know, it's one of those weekends where you get so munted Saturday, Sunday, <laughs> Monday, yeah. you phone up work saying you can't come in Tuesday, forgetting that's a bank holiday as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, nine months from now, I bet you anything, Flotilla will be the most popular girl's name. <laughs> They tried to pick on the people who had to, who had to do a lot of fit. There was, there was a woman in Tower Bridge uh, interviewing in the it guy. Or on it? In it, in, in the control room of Tower Bridge. Oh, okay. Just before the guy pressed the button to make the thing go whoop, like that. The, uh, and she said, so, is it going to work? And the guy looked at her in a kind of a, of course it's going to work. <laughs> stop, stop trying to introduce a note of peril. And yeah. she tried to, are you sure it's going to work? Like, it's suddenly it's an action movie. <laughs> oh, Jesus, the bridge is stuck. Quick, I'm going to run down. He's wedging things like, well, she's coming, she's coming! <laughs> As if there's a danger that the Queen's boat is going to come along <laughs> and then... <laughs> and then the Queen's running away. <laughs> all, all the thrones get pushed back towards the back of the boat. <laughs> ah! <laughs> shit, to the back of the boat. <laughs> yes, it's going to work! <laughs> there, were, there were some good bits, though. Um, my favourite bit was um, the concert uh, scene, Wolf Harris. If you saw him, he had on a white jacket, right? And it was funny, because I was watching it with my brother, who's 16, and he doesn't know who Wolf Harris is, so he sees a white guy in white jacket, white hair, white beard and glasses, and he goes, hey, your blood. Why is the KFC coming at the concert? <laughs> <laughs> was it not a bit strange that they built that really elaborate, beautiful rowboat called, uh, what's it called, the Gloriana? Gloriana, for, my for, uh, that. for the Queen, and yet, was it just me who thought it's a bit weird that she's not on it? Because the only person who was on it was Claire Balding, as far as I <laughs> Essentially, there's thousands of foreign tourists who think that Claire Balding is the Queen. <laughs> I, I, I saw the British better, Queen man. the other day. Looks like she can handle herself in a pub fight. <laughs> <laughs> All the American acts bizarrely said happy birthday to her. Was that a, it was, you know. Yeah. Grace Jones, who had a hula hoop for the last for three years, randomly walks out, hula hooping, slave to the rhythm. <laughs> that was the weirdest thing. I genuinely thought, am I the only one seeing this? Why? <laughs> <laughs> to the rhythm. It was Who booked Grace Jones? <laughs> she wasn't hula hooping. She'd been imprisoned by the elders of Krypton. <laughs> no, you got to be very careful. I learned from Twitter. You got to be very careful. On the night of the on the night of the concert, I had the temerity at one stage of going because it was, it was, there was an Ireland football match on at the same time, and you know, Twitter's a global medium, and I was going, oh look, this is a score at the moment, like for loads of Irish people, and I had loads of people tweeting going, nobody cares. Hashtag Jubilee. Uh, <laughs> Like, like I walked onto the stage and gone, yeah, yeah, Rob, put a sock in it. Uh, it's nil nil. Uh, <laughs> and, <then what? laughs> and in a year when we've had such a campaign against knife crime, who do we have Tom Jones going, I felt the knife in my <laughs> head <laughs> and she left no more. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
The, uh, why is the weather making headlines? Because the weather outside is frightful, although the fire inside is delightful. <laughs> so, since there's no place to go... Basically, they've had some problems with caravans, haven't they? That's <laughs> putting, that is putting it mildly. They, they have had, had, they had, they had some, some problems, problems with caravans. Well, the, thing is, the thing about caravans yeah. is you can actually move them, can't you? <laughs> it is quite so. It is quite unexpected. Now I think about a static caravan, it was a static caravan park I felt particularly bad for. Hello, I'd like to complain about my static caravan. What seems to be the problem? Well, I'll tell you what the problem is. It's not quite as static as that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like George Osborne is somewhere going, if the VAT doesn't get you, the weather will. <laughs> <laughs> that was in Wales, right? That was in Wales. Yeah, because um, I saw an interview online about, they interviewed some woman who was on one of those trailer park things. Um, they were having a honeymoon and it got destroyed. And she said, oh, it's a, it's a disaster, it's a disaster. And all I could think was, if you're married to a man who's taking you on a honeymoon <laughs> to Wales to spend time in a caravan, it's already a bloody disaster. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, insult to injury being added there. Uh, if, if you're watching the show, just to cheer up. Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> I just wonder, is your host pipe ban? Do people ring up going, hello, about this host pipe ban? Am I still allowed to use it to tether myself to a rock so I don't get <laughs> washed away by the flood? Does that, count? Does that break the rules of the host pipe ban? <laughs> in Littlehampton, yes. where did they put the, the flood victims? They put them in the local swimming baths overnight. I mean, that's just taking the piss, isn't it? <laughs> They'd be like putting earthquake victims in a bouncy castle. The person I blame, the person I blame, I blame for this, is the guy who was interviewed two months ago when it was like, there was two weeks of rain, and they said, well, surely the drought is over now, and they went, oh, no, no, no. You need another six weeks of rain to do the drought. <laughs> what we've got is happy now! <laughs> And the point's going to Greg, Hugh and Chris. Oh. Justice. No. Yeah. The white man's life. Right now we come to scenes we'd like to see. So if everyone can make their way over to the performance area, I'll read out this week's topics and then we'll see what our panellists can come up with. OK, here we go. The first subject is... <laughs> unlikely things to hear at an award ceremony. And the winner is... Dara O'Brien. <laughs> <laughs> And the award for Driver of the Year goes to David Cameron for his perfectly executed U-turn. <laughs> Welcome to the National Insincerity Awards. And can I say what a pleasure it is <laughs> to be here. <laughs> and Soap of the Year goes to... <laughs> Coronation Street! <laughs> Would you please welcome your host for the night, Deck. <laughs> <laughs> and the award for best actress this evening goes to John Travolta's wife. <laughs> <laughs> Father of the year is David Cameron. <laughs> And predictably, for the 50th year running, the rear of the year has been won by the same man. Come on up, Chris. It's a Chris Rear joke. <laughs> <laughs> and the award for best film? Kling! Kling film! <laughs> oh! Oh, that was all right, though, was it? Bullshit, Dara. It's all politics, man. <laughs> this is the point in the Psychic Awards when we like to remember those we lost next year. <laughs> <laughs> well, they said it was ill-advised, but welcome to the first Witness Protection Scheme Award. <laughs> and the award for most cleavage on view goes to Eamon Holmes' arse. <laughs> well, now our final category. Category C. There are three sex offenders nominated tonight. 
And I'd just like to say to the wife at home, you better not be there when I get home, sister. Because I'm big time now. <laughs> and the best posthumously released rap record goes to Kim Yong for I Told You I Was Ill. <laughs> Present best film in a foreign language. Would you please welcome Nick Griffin? <laughs> <laughs> and the winner of Rear of the Year goes to Chris Rear. <laughs> okay. Our next topic is unlikely lines from a thriller. What more evidence do you need that there is a mole? Look at the lawn. <laughs> Your wife's head in a box. You must be the most unlucky contestant ever on Deal or No Deal. <laughs> <laughs> what colour wire do I have to cut? The lilac, the mauve, the salmon pink or the fuchsia? <laughs> <laughs> I want to make you a vodka martini. You can't handle vermouth. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a gun in your pocket, or are you just pleased to see me? She purred. Yes, it is a gun in my pocket, and I've just shot my cock off. <laughs> I'm telling you, there will be no attack. This is a side picked by Roy Hodgson. <laughs> so, Mr. Bond, we meet... Ah! Oh, flipping cat! <laughs> I'm telling you, Captain, I work best alone! Or sometimes in a team! <laughs> Basically, I'm saying I'm flexible. <laughs> <laughs> So, Mr. Bond, we meet at last. Why didn't we have a Skype? <laughs> I would like to gently lift your horse's foot. <laughs> you can't handle the hoof! <laughs> I had human liver with fava beans and a nice Chianti. But the entertainment was excellent and he was a lovely host. So I'm going to give Hannibal seven out of ten. <laughs> Here's Johnny! Do you mind? I'm trying to have a shit in it. <laughs> <laughs> this prostitute isn't dead, said the Norwegian detective. She's just pining for the fjords. <laughs> As his eyes gradually became accustomed to the shadowy darkness, he realised he was not alone in that room. <gasps> Who is it? It's me, Peter Andre! <laughs> <laughs> OK, you're getting enough of this. The point's going to Greg, you and Chris! Show. This week's winners are Chris Allison, Hugh Jones, and Greg Davis. <laughs> Commiserations, Andy Parsons, Nathan Caden, and Mickey Flanagan. Thank you for watching. I'm Jara Breen. Good night. The new BBC Mobile homepage is available now. You can customise content to get straight to the things that interest you. Go to bbc.co.uk on your mobile and bookmark the site now.